think of Las Vegas, they think of this. Let me show you a little bit of my Vegas. My name's DJ Tamby. I've been tattooing for over 20 years. Been tattooing out of Las Vegas, Nevada for the last 16. I use the XO. I really like the, the fatter grips. It's more ergonomic and it's just, just nicer on the hand. As far as back as I can remember, I've been making art. Back when I was a lot younger, probably around eight years old, I got into graffiti. There was train tracks right behind my house. I can remember me as an eight year old kid actually hopping on to the slow moving train to downtown to go paint. I always stuck with art. You know, my family pushed me in that direction always and, and told me to stick with it. I had taken some ink from art class, some Indian ink, and hand poked a tattoo on my leg when I was 13 years old. My friends saw it when I got to school and they were like, is that a tattoo, you know? And that progressed into me after school, hand poking all these kids' tattoos, everything from like bongs to crosses. I did, a, you know, little suns, whatever, y you name it. I would hand poke these tattoos on kids. And then that progressed into, you know, making like a prison style tattoo machine. Uh, I had a couple friends that did a project for school. They made this wooden tattoo machine. It actually worked, it had like a wood housing that held this motor as opposed to like toothbrush, big pen, super prison style. So they gave me that and I actually was using this wooden tattoo machine for a little while. It was completely ridiculous. Tattooing over 20 years, you know, almost 25 years to see the progression in tattooing is, is crazy. Tattooing was so much different when I was a kid. I transitioned from coil machines to a rotary years and years ago um, when rotaries started becoming big. Later on, pen style rotaries started popping up on the scene. And as soon as FK Irons came out with, with a pen style machine, I jumped on it. Started with the Zion, great machine. I mean, that thing hummed. It was just a different feeling in your hand. It was like nothing in your hand. When I first used that thing, it was crazy. It was life changing. You want to be tattooing for a long time and, and uh, anything to take that weight off your hand or, or wrist or, or arm, it, it helps. So FK Irons came out with the Flux, built in battery pack, you know, choose your speeds, wireless Bluetooth. It was just a piece of like space age technology. You know, it was like a different quality. You know, I just saw it as the future of tattoo machines. I don't even think I own an RC cable anymore. Having that freedom of something that wasn't back weighted was a complete different transition. And I feel like that's why a lot of traditional artists, they don't try the transition. The ones that do try them, is, it's life changing. And, and sooner or later, they're all gonna transition. There's six artists working in here and it's completely quiet, but we got the one, we got the one guy who's like, Bring! my buddy Roger works next to me. He has this thing, sounds like a fucking taser, dude. Using that rotary motor, that's just a constant hum and it keeps the same consistency and is just the same power consistently. It's a different, it creates a different tattoo and, and, the, and the possibilities are endless. I feel like vagina tattoos were a big thing in the late, late 90s, early 2000s. I've done some crazy shit. My, my mentor was completely, he was, he was nuts. Let's say he's nuts. At one time he owned eight tattoo shops in our town. You know, we were like a factory when I started tattooing. He always had these bright ideas. You know, he turned a 30 foot trailer into a tattoo shop that we'd pull behind his Hummer. Um, he had an idea of turning as a fucking pirate ship, like a straight up sailboat into a tattoo shop that was docked. I tattooed on this thing for a couple of weeks and I couldn't, I couldn't do it no more. I mean, if you ever tattoo like this, it's brutal. My apprenticeship was completely ridiculous. I mean, it was a lot of the same repetitive tattoos all the time. I was finding new ways to make those, that same tattoo that I had to do every day different. So I kind of got a name for myself in the hood. Like, you, yo, best hood tattoos out there, you gotta go to this dude. Like, $25 tattoos, the best in the game, you go to this dude, so. I developed a name for myself pretty young. You know, I'm taking home trophies in 02. You know, tattoo of the day, two days in a row at Boston Tattoo Convention. Like, that's, that's what I was doing at that time, so. During that time, I, I got heavily into, into drugs. You know, it was just part of the scene. I had dabbled in, with drugs since I was a young kid. Um, started smoking cigarettes at eight years old. Um, turned into smoking weed. Uh, we would do, you know, LSD on the weekends when I was 14 years old. You know, that's just that's just what it was. So 
I started selling pills, got heavily into those pills. I was always around that type of stuff. I had a father that did cocaine. Never really wanted to get into that. But uh, it, it turned into a crazy drug habit. Let's let's put it that way. Um, you know, the pills, when the pills weren't there, it turned into heroin. Never shooting anything, but I used to like putting anything I could find up my nose. After I left the shop I was at, opened the shop with my cocaine dealer at the time. We thought it was a great idea. He, the day after I left the shop that I was at, he was like, y'all open your shop, let's go. So we're driving around looking for shops. Found a building. That following week, we're remodeling it. Worked there for a little while. You know, it was great. Lived at the shop, you know, sleeping there late nights, just drugs. And it, it, it was just a crazy, crazy time in my life. Had a falling out with him. One day he said, you come back to the shop, I'll kill you. It was some brutal times. All my stuff was at that shop. Pictures of my kids, clothes, every award I've ever won, tattoo machines. I just never went back. I lived in my car for a little bit, lived on the streets, um, was basically homeless. It was basically living wherever I could find a spot. So I was still tattooing a little bit, you know, people's houses after that. Living at a friend's house, I get a knock on the door. I forget what family member, I think it was my brother, but they're like, you know, the whole family's that going to be at your aunt's tomorrow. We want you to come. At this time, I'm deep into heroin, cocaine, smoking crack. I agreed to go. It was actually my cousin's house. I agreed to go to my cousin's house. Everybody was there. It was an intervention for me. Then the following day, I, uh, I ended up leaving, going to rehab in uh, Prescott, Arizona. I was supposed to stay a little longer, but it was just a, a very expensive. So I called my mom. I, I said, uh, you know, she was paying for it. I was like, mm -hmm. I'll come live with you. Just get me out of here. So I moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. When I was rehabilitated, I finally ended up looking for jobs and uh, stumbled, stumbled across Bad Apple. Uh, I've been here for 16 years now and uh, it's my home pretty much, you know. I've been through a lot of hardship, you know. Might be little things I would change from my past, but I, I could say it's molded me into who I am today. You know, the moment I got clean, it was just all up from there, you know. Quality just skyrocketed, just just mental state. And I mean, obviously being clear headed, just put my tattoos on a whole new level. I brought a good buddy of mine, DJ Tambi. Yeah, when I moved to Vegas, I started getting a, a big name for myself. I was actually on my first reality show. I got a call from the Oxygen Network for a show called Best Inc. That was my first reality show. So that kickstarted my my TV career. Later on, I got a call from my buddy Bubba and he was like, yo, Ink Master called me. He's like, yo, I need a partner. You'd be my partner. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go, let's do it. And uh, we ended up winning season nine. They invited me back for season 10. Also winning that um, with my buddy Josh Payne. After that, they, they offered me my own show called Grudge Match where I was a judge with Clean Rock One and Ryan Ashley. We thought that would go for more seasons, but it, they ended up not picking it up the second season. So that went for one season, which was a bummer. A lot of artists frown upon TV shows, but I think it's just the mentality of some tattooers. I, I feel like it's like, tattooing is like its own society. Like it's different, you know? <laughs> I never really stuck with one style of tattooing. I'd have to tattoo everything from Japanese to, you know, little cartoon characters to Paul Booth Flash or Bob Terrell or Guy Atchison's type stuff, you know. It was a wide range and I think that's just that street shop mentality. I think that's, I just, I just stuck with it, you know. I see all these artists and you go to their page and it's just all the same stuff, same style. I get that artists want to stay with their own style, but I get bored, man. Yeah, the exaggerated realism, it was just taking that form of realism and turning it into more poppy, like brighter, you know, heavy outline some things and almost a new school version of, of realism. I've always just tested myself and I make art out of anything. You know, I've always, I've always been like that since I was a kid, whether it be woodworking to play or just anything. You hand me something, I'll create something out of it. So I've always had that creative touch to anything I, I did. Every form of art I follow and I am intrigued by that and I, I put a little bit of that into me. It could be anything. It could be a, a Renaissance oil painter or it could be someone who makes cartoon toys. You know, it's just tons of different 
outlets that my brain just plugs into and uh, I'm inspired by. It's really easy to get inspired nowadays with, with social media and, you know, the online stuff. It's really cool nowadays to, to just, you know, sit on the toilet and then hop off and want to paint a giant mural. Like that's how. That's <laughs> Art, skateboarding, music. Gas won't fit in the tank, yeah. They got my hands tied of submission. All I'm getting is thanks, yeah. The whole hip hop scene, it's just always been a, a big part of my life. Sneakers, I've been into sneakers since I was, I'll say eight years old. My stepfather worked at a, a shoe store when I was a kid and I got my first pair of Reebok pumps you know, with that bright orange basketball on the tongue, and that was that was it for me. Life's great. I have two kids. My daughter, she's big into gymnastics. She's 10 years old. My son, he's an amazing photographer and uh, does some crazy edits with his photos and, and is also into art, so that's that's awesome too. He lives in Rochester, New York still. Hopefully one day soon he'll be living out here. So, uh, yeah, we're always making faces. I'm always doing some weird shit with my kids. Yes, I have four dogs, which is, uh, it's a little crazy. My wife just kept adding one, adding one, adding one. And that well, one was one, the, the latest one was my fault. It was a gift for my daughter for Christmas. We were thinking about getting five and I was like, you know, five is going to be too much. Yeah, my dogs are crazy, dude. They got their own Instagram. You know what I mean? You can follow them right here if you want. My wife's born and raised in Las Vegas and uh, she's every bit of it. She grew up in a trailer, foul mouth, church going at the same time. And she was a cocktail waitress at a strip club in town at the time. Came into her tattoo appointment, like dressed as like a cat or something. And I was like, I'm gonna fucking marry this chick. Check. You know, I did these like little cover ups on her wrist, like some stars or something. Me and my wife now exchanged numbers and she bugged me to hang out. And uh, she ended up sending me nudes. She's got it all. People that were born and raised here are a little, they're a little bit different, you know what I mean? They've seen a lot, you know, it's, it's, Vegas is a, a different piece of, a different, it's, it's different. <laughs> I wouldn't have a career if she didn't do everything that I can. Um, she runs all my books. I do my Instagram, but other than that, she, she does everything, you know, the financial stuff to bookings and, and all that. She keeps me almost too busy. When FK took me on as a pro team member, it's just uh, an amazing feeling. Just being a part of like a, a family that's innovating, that, that, that's what it means to me. FK sent me the 15 hour battery packs that are just a little bit longer and it's gonna be awesome. And I just started using it, I got it the other days. So every year they would come out with a different styles or always pushing themselves to, to search for the next best thing. FK really, you know, takes, takes care of their artists like a family and um, anything I need, I just uh, make a phone call and I, I'll get a new battery or, or new machine if I need it. The way that FK is pushing technology is, it's crazy. Artists creating full on oil paintings on the skin and doing crazy, crazy stuff. I think a big part of it is, is FK Irons. It's very inspiring and, and, and uh, I just think it's a, a great company. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Peace and love. Later.